and welcome to Tarmac, or should I say, Ola. <laughs> I'm Dave. I'm Matthew, and look at this. Bronze, and I mean copper accents, so you know what that means, it's a Cupra. That's right, we've got the all-electric Cupra Born V+, Plus. so all-electric, hot hatch, and um, actually with the bullhorn. Anyway, come let's take a look at this. Now I'm going to explain this even though you guys probably already know this, Cupra or Cup Racing is the sporty side of SEAT which is the Spanish Motor Group vehicle um, and basically in 2018 it became segregated from the SEAT group and became its own thing which is like I said more of the performance side and Cupra itself is also now moving towards the electrical performance side so th that fills in the blanks and uh, the big difference as far as most other car brands that go on is as Matthew pointed out these copper accents here and also this funky looking uh, badge which uh, nobody still seem to, seems to know what it is whether it's a sort of bull looking thing or a transformers thing anyway it's a funky looking thing and looks great this one is the Bourne, so their first production neutral or net neutral zero emissions vehicle and uh, it's also 100% electrical we'll get to the actual power in a moment looking around the front of it it's very very angry looking Cupra written across the across the front here again in this copper accent and the grills here are basically your intelligence so allowing flow to get right through the uh, through the underside to the battery section but look at it it's a it's an angry mean looking vehicle and it's actually mean in the way it drives when it comes to color our, our review model is quasar gray or which in basically i would call quasar gray and actually in in real terms it looks a bit black to me but there are six different color options in this in this uh model and one of them happens to be aurora blue which is an extra 850 dollars and that to me would be the pick of it but it's all down to you the wheels they're 19 inch and called typhoon wheels and you can see that look at them they're just really got these copper accents that are typhoony so look very typhoony and uh, like i said the first time they are actually part of or gratis as part of the vehicle goes up the front we've got uh disc brakes and on the back we have drum brakes and uh the reason for that is actually gives you an extra i think it's around about 15 kilometers of range so they are not just cheapening out by going with drum brakes on the back it is actually to add to the more range for the vehicle now, <laughs> in case we needed the reminding, it is a 100% electric, which is cool. And overall, we're looking around about 4.32 meters in length and 1.54 meters in height. So there's your dimensions. So it is very garage friendly. And also I'm really happy about it because it's a hatchback rather than an SUV. So an electric hatchback, who knew that they would be a thing? And, of particular note is this C pillar here. It's got this lovely texture to it. Uh, I'm sure it has the aerodynamics, but more of a case that you want to keep rubbing it and making it, oh, I don't know, it's kind of a good thing. There's actually quite a lot going on around the rear here. So you've got a obviously a roofline spoiler here. The actual tailgate itself is made of a sort of plastic composite. So it's taken away some of the weight. And as you can see, there's also a full length coast to coast uh, light bar across here, which looks really funky. The uh, Cupra logo here is actually gets you access to the boot, which is quite cool. And inside is quite a deep dish here. You've got 385 litres of trunk space to do with as you will. And also you've got the Cupra logo and a rear diffuser down here, obviously to make sure that there's plenty of wind stuff going out the back and making it very sleek and very hatchbacky. Anyway, let's see what powers this. Behind this flap, what we've got access to is a an 82 kilowatt hour battery, which is actually usable at 77 kilowatts hours, and actually it charges at 170 kilowatts or a maximum of 170 kilowatts. So when fully charged, it'll give you 100, uh, 511 kilometers of range, which is pretty good. This then powers a an electrical motor at the rear, which is 150 kilowatts plus an extra 20 kilowatts under boost, and actually that is also 
so as 310 newton meters of torque so it's plenty on plenty going along around here and also that gives you a zero to 100 time in around about seven seconds so not yeah not bad it's certainly for something that's similar in size to a golf uh, but <laughs> probably about a ton heavier it's still rocking out same or very similar uh, performance rate so pretty good Anyway, speaking of things that are pretty performing or perform well, Matthew's inside and he'll tell you what's going on with that. Well, I'm not sure what Dave's on about our respective performances, but at least on one hand, I can say that this Cupra does well in terms of its performance or its obligations towards the environment, you can say. On the one hand, it's the first Cupra to be made completely net carbon neutral uh, in terms of its production. And that's helped in particular on the inside where you have the carpets which are made from eco nil uh, recycled nylon and then the seats themselves which are made of sequel uh, recycled ocean plastic as well. So it is really thoughtful in terms of reusing some of those plastic materials in terms of this interior. And I've got to say the seats themselves, Cupra does a really excellent job uh, with seats across the board and in this car as well in this born v plus they are nicely bucketed heated for both passenger and driver at the front and um, just the general look of them feels very much like a gamer chair if you like and that's not not just a nod to the logo but it is actually quite comfortable to sit in even over longer distances on the comfort aspect it does also have uh, plenty of storage spaces to keep all of your things um, neat and tidy in the car. You've got generous sized door bins there which can have had books in there and you know all sorts of stuff no problem. Um, down the middle here you have two cup holders, you have another storage space all of which can actually be hidden away completely as well and then you've got your wireless phone charger over here actually so just slanted away from the driver so as not to interfere with uh, your general driving experience. Open this up and you get quite a deep uh, storage compartment in there as well along with two USB-C chargers tucked away underneath there. Uh, again, to keep all the cabling and things completely out of sight and make sure this interior looks quite neat and tidy. Now, speaking of the materials and, and things in general, you can see there's a suede look material covering this central tunnel here and there's some more of that on the door as well but i've got to say for the most part the interior is quite uh, plasticky almost um, the top of the doors well they're really hard and quite scratchy and same thing for the bottom too um, also quite scratchy you do get i mean plenty of scratchy materials down here as well the um, up the top here and again this panel here is quite plasticky in nature too um, but again that's to be expected. This is the entry point into the Cupra uh, electric experience. So that sort of thing does come with a car, I suppose, at this price point. It's not all bad though, because technology wise, they have kicked things up really well. It does have a, a suite of safety systems. Uh, and of course that Cupra E noise that it makes on the outside, which is quite an interesting sound and certainly makes people take notice at lower speeds. Now the 12 inch infotainment screen here is of course familiar with those of you who do know the VW Group's products and you'll certainly recognize this sort of design as very much the Cupra software setup uh, with these sort of colorful uh, icons down the bottom and then notice the Cupra Born uh, sitting there on the bottom right too. The other thing you will know if you are familiar with VW Group products is these touch capacitive bars over here which work well on in the daytime like this. So you slide your finger up and down and as you can see there temperature increases and same thing respectively with the volume bar in the middle. What's not so nice though is at night where it's not lit up and you're left sort of fumbling around trying to change a song when in fact the temperature is going up sort of thing. But um, it's something I feel like you'll get more used to over time with living with the car. Now, speaking of living with the car, I want to touch on this because I thought this has been a really intelligent feature uh, implemented here is in the air conditioning. So if I press the climate button there, you'll see that it's dual zone um, and that's a giveaway on here too. But because I'm the only person sitting in the front, it's only my 
zone, which is actually putting out the climate um, or rather air conditioning to the desired temperature. It's not really prioritizing that passenger side because, well, there's no one there. But on the other hand, when there is someone there, you'll see that that zone is also lit up with the same sort of vigorosity, if you like, um, to show that, you know, the person there is being cared for. So I thought that was quite a smart use of the energy on offer here. Speaking of which, I did touch on the fact that it does have heated seats, as you can see there. Also got a heated steering wheel. Uh, for the driver and then of course Cupra's eye climate which is really handy for both cold and warm temperatures where you want something rapid to you know either warm your feet or hands or stuff like that so another intelligent implementation in terms of the air conditioning aka climate as well you turn that on and that sort of gives you a bit of purity on the inside of the car uh, as well heading back to the main screen you get pretty much everything you need um, by swiping through these few menus, including the um, charging option over here, which tells you your history of driving. This is more recent, but previously I was getting about 14.5 to 14.8 kilowatt hours per 100 Ks on average, which is actually less than the claimed average of 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So it just goes to show that some efficient driving and coasting can actually bring that efficiency down quite a bit more than what's the claimed figure as well. Another thing I want to touch on is heading back to this screen. There are four different dr preset driving modes and one individual one. So right now we're in comfort, which is the default setting when you do start up the car, but you also have performance and then Cupra, which is the one up from there, plus your individual mode. And then lastly, the range mode as well. And every time you do change the modes, you'll notice that the range figure actually changes as well according to the particular mode you're in. Now the screen in front here, the instrument cluster, is actually about 5.2 or 5.3 inches, so quite small compared to what we've seen in terms of modern digital instrument clusters. But that's not to say that it doesn't have all the vital information that you need on here. You've got of course your digital speedo, the gear, and below that the battery percentage and range. And then on the right side you have a, a meter to show the uh, efficiency as well and you can change that so since charging or since start uh, and then of course a little icon at the top there that shows which mode you're in then on the left side your adaptive cruise control settings as well notice the lit up symbols here for the gear shifter that's because it actually isn't in the middle or sort of any buttons it's a little sort of rotator knob on the end here and you push it forward or to the right to engage drive and then bring it closer to you or sort of you know anti-clockwise if you like left to uh, engage reverse and neutral as such and to engage park it's just a button on the end of it there so quite simple and again your B or regenerative braking mode is another turn of the dial uh, and that engages that. Taking a step back to the steering wheel, well, this is another thing that Cupra does remarkably well in their cars is make some nice looking and feeling steering wheels. As you can see the copper stitching all along there, copper highlighted drive buttons there. You've got the buttons laid out on here and these are actually the infamous touch capacitive buttons that again the VW group has come out and acknowledged the fact that they were sort of flawed and they have gone back to physical buttons but this does incorporate these touch capacitive buttons and the way they are laid out is on the right side you have your audio settings there and on the left side you have your adaptive cruise control now speaking of zones there are of course some pretty spacious rear seats in the back of this cupra born so let's get harry to jump in the back and show you exactly what it feels like in there Hi, I'm Harry and I just jumped from behind the camera to now come in here and test the back seat of the Cupra Born because if we were testing for um, um, uh, size for, for kids, we could as well use Dave, but in this case we are using a real size um, ad adult um, human being. So I'll climb inside and confirm that um, rear seat space for the, the Cooper Born is actually quite good because the, 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 the rims are moved all the way there to the front and the back uh, of the car leading to a, a big wheelbase that of course translates into heaps of knee room for me at six foot two and also quite a bit of uh, head room as well. I think that I have uh, around 
four fingers in here. Um, I think that it should be okay for three people to be on the on, on the back, but of course not for, for big, big trips. But uh, for four people, I think that it is plenty of room. Uh, definitely more than a, than a golf, I would say. So to start off with, this Cobra Born V Plus or Cobra Born is Cobra's first fully electric car. But the question is, does it still retain that challenger spirit that Cobra um, prides themselves on? Well, does it? Well, certainly when it comes to the looks, I think, you know, the copper accents really just make it stand out. And it is a handsome looking uh, hatch. and. In all honesty, I've driven it quite a lot now, actually, particularly on the launch, and I found it to be quite a frisky little vehicle. Um, not not stupidly fast, but frisky. Uh, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, you know, in range mode, for example, or comfort mode, it is fairly docile. You know, it rolls along nicely, but then you start to change it up into Cooper mode, especially, and all of a sudden, it just picks up pace quickly it feels very sharp uh, going around corners too and uh, you know that typical EV layout of having the battery down low helps with that balance uh, especially and I think in some ways it does emulate what a fully electric hot hatch would be right absolutely I mean it's it's a heavy vehicle we get that and it's even heavier when I'm involved but it, it seems to balance really nicely if you throw it into corners it does tend to oversteer sorry understeer a little bit and then correct very quickly so it's it will let you play but then it will sort of rein you back in but seven seconds for a for a vehicle that's pretty heavy is is not bad actually uh, and seriously i mean this is meant to be you know a compact hatchback and harry and i were actually discussing that as the vw group moves into this fully electric future this is actually the entry point um, and essentially the smallest car you'll be able to buy from the VW group uh, will be either this Cupra Born or the Volkswagen ID3. And the fact that these hatchbacks are actually just over 1.9 tons in weight is huge. It's nearly half a ton heavier than the outgoing Golf. Um, but the fact that it matches or can nearly match the performance statistics of the GTI just goes to show how much punch this electric motor and and battery can put out yeah i mean 150 kilowatts and then when you've got when when the availability is there you've got the extra 20 kilowatts i mean it's no this is no slouch and also the way it sits i mean it's got really nice road manners i think it sits really nicely it, particularly when you're cornering and things like that it, it's it's got a nice nice 50 50 sort of balance to it it's um fun it's a fun drive well, speaking of fun, it's actually almost um, unnerving, to be honest, of how easily this car just rolls along when oh, you yeah. uh, lift off the throttle. I mean, it just feels like, you know, you've stuck the car into neutral and it's just coasting along. The feeling is very um, supernatural, almost, you can say, um, but... You know, yeah, it takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah, so if you're in just normal drive and going along the motorway and you just sort of let go of the, the throttle, it'll just, it's like perpetual motion. It just continues to go. It doesn't have one pedal driving, but if you do put it into the B mode, so the regen mode, it then, it, it, it sends to sort of pull you up quite reasonably. It won't come to a full stop and um, it, will, well, it won't hold from there, but it's it's a nice movement. So, and you're also getting the regen there, but you're right, when you're on just drive, it continues to roll, it seems endless. Speaking of stopping and I guess, in a way, the safety features, uh, this has got an A5 star and cap safety rating and you've got all the standard stuff, you know, you're reversing camera, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, adaptive cruise, it really has the whole suite of functions covered um, but one thing that i do want to remark on is the reversing camera actually is mounted really low down on the rear just above the number plate so when you are looking in the screen it sort of just gives you the vision of well the ground behind uh, but then it does have a 360 degree camera as well which is extremely helpful for tighter uh, parking garages and things 
I found the modes are good there that you do step up from obviously the more eco side of it to the performance side I really like the fact that it's got a Cooper mode I think it's it's kind of funky to have that and really go lean on those sort of Cooper uh, or the Cooper history that's going on and um, I it does give you more of a racy feel definitely and I think the styling and the general look and feel of the car you know sitting in these bucket seats with the aggressive styling the copper accents you know definitely uh, you feel like you're in something a little bit uh, hot if you like what about range how are you finding that because it's the forecast is what 511 I don't think we've got anywhere near that no well, not anywhere near that but it's not quite hit those marks close enough so when we were when we did pick up the car with about 99 percent or 100 percent of charge we did have an indicated uh, 498 kilometers of range that was in comfort mode too and driving along i found it to be pretty accurate although when you are on the motorway at 100 k's and climbing it does tend to drop figures quite fast uh, from there but generally with a mix of town driving and sort of 80Ks and 100Ks motorway driving, I found that um, you can achieve a roughly about 14.8, 15 kilowatt hours per 100Ks worth of efficiency, which as I said before, is actually better than uh, what Cooper claimed for this car, which is 17 kilowatt hours per 100Ks. It's because he drives like a Nana. <laughs> uh, and speaking of, well, Nanas and things, it does have the, as I'm just, we're just driving along right now, comfortably it has the, the sort of driving demeanor to you know relax uh, your elderly family members but at the same time a couple of flicks of a button and all of a sudden you're in Cupra mode and it just does this um, and I mean the grip is just phenomenal uh, going around corners and the, the way it just picks up speed uh, it is it feels very sort of hot hatch-esque like you know, the glory days of, of petrol hot hatches, if you like, uh, the way it flings itself around corners, genuinely brings a smile to, you know, my face, and I'm sure, well, more so a bit of an uneasy feeling to Dave, I guess. Yeah, once the fear is <laughs> off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I would say is, I, I it lacks a sort of punchy exhaust note, because there is no exhaust, obviously, but I would have liked a sort of, I don't know, a cupra racing sound i don't know would have been nice to get a, a better sensation of how fast you're going rather than just having the blood drain from you and certainly the cupra vz the petrol cars do make some nice pops and bangs and crackles so it would have been uh, quite funky actually and very sort of i guess in a way fitting with cupra's attitude to have that on an electric car imagine that an ev with pops and bangs and maybe even turbo noises So there you have it, the Cupra Born V Plus. So not VZ, but V Plus. 100% uh, electric hot hatch with copper accents, the um, the Cupra logo, and the Cupra Spirit. In all honesty, it's got it's a sprightly vehicle that uh, does offer a little bit of excitement when, or plenty of excitement when you're uh, when you're trying to take it into the corners and give it a performance drive. Absolutely. It's certainly got that Challenger uh, persona that Cupra very much uh, incorporates as part of its brand. And driving it around, I've certainly found that it incites a lot of curiosity from uh, other EV drivers and general sort of car owners on the road. It definitely uh, is an eye-catching machine. Anyway, thanks for watching. You never know what we're going to come into next. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Olé! Or actually, whatever it is in Spanish. See ya.